Watch AutoLine After Hours live at AutoLine.tv every Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. That's 12 p.m. Pacific. You can subscribe to this podcast for free by searching for AutoLine in iTunes, Stitcher, or YouTube. AutoLine After Hours is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, solutions for your journey, and by Borg Warner propulsion solutions that support a clean, energy-efficient world. Gary. John, how are you? I can't wait to get going with the show, man. I... You know, it, it's, it's very interesting, if you think about it, that everyone is talking about electrifying vehicles, making electric vehicles, and so on. But one of the key aspects of this whole thing is the design of the vehicles that are going to be produced or are being produced. And I, I think that that's, that's so fundamental to the success of electric vehicles. And I think we're going to learn about uh, a company that's really focused on doing a fantastic job in terms of its design. Yeah, that's right, because we've got Kamal Couric, the head of global design for Lincoln. And Kamal, thanks for joining us on the show today. Thank you, John and Gary. Thank you for having me. Hey, to I got to I gotta tell you, when you guys showed that star concept car uh, uh, just a while back, I flipped out. I thought, wow, it's got so many interesting features on it, uh, so many clever ideas that, that you went with. I'm not even sure where to start with, but let me just start with a very basic question. You're leaving Lincoln's current design language behind. You're going off in a totally new direction. Uh, and it looks to me like you're using the transition to electric vehicles to set a new stage for Lincoln. Is, is Am I reading that right or what? Well, first of all, I think you you, you got a few, few things I think um, that we're quite proud of. We uh, we have a very clear vision, which was a few years ago, which is called our Quiet Flight. And you can see the, the cars we have on the road now with the Aviator, Corsair, Navigator, and an Nautilus, uh, it is a very clear message, I think, that the cars are fantastically executed. But with this new opportunity that we just had, you know, going all electric and have this new flexible architecture and platform, that opened up the whole new world for designers. You can you cannot imagine, you know, what world we're living in now. I think it's like, I feel like we are in 1900 back, that you study from scratch. You actually re can re-envision, re-imagine the, the, the transportation the way we, we actually, you can, the people move and they use their vehicles. I think it's, it's like an amazing time. It's probably one of the best times us as a designers and engineers are in because, you know, the freedom we have, is just going to be so spectacular. And, and you can see the first manifestation with this concept. So, so go through some of those freedoms. You don't need a grill opening. You don't have this big lump of a cast iron engine or even aluminum up in front. What else? I mean, what, what, what's freeing you guys up here? Well, there's a few things. I mean, uh, think about from an ideal scenario point. It's like, you know, for us at Lincoln, it's all about the experiences. You know, putting the user, putting, putting the customer up front and, and, and really focusing on the things that they like. Also, the things that don't like. Listening very carefully to them and, and crafting these moments that matter to them. And one of the things we, we set as our tenants is like, you know, to create the vehicles that the world really is going to want and, and really need. And, and maybe they don't know it today. But we want to create this new experience that they even couldn't imagine 10 years ago or 20 years ago. So now that you have basically no motor, as you said, and you have all of a sudden this clean sheet of paper, uh, you can create um, quite radical, uh, quite radical silhouettes and quite radical experiences inside of the interior of this vehicle. Mm -hmm. Well, it seems to me, Kamal, that the exterior of this vehicle is a departure in some ways from what you know we're seeing now on the road and. Um, you know, as, as John mentioned, you know, the, the grill is a completely different thing. You guys are using that, I, I you know, as, as a lighting element. But, um, you know, as, as I look at the, the rear of the vehicle, um, it, it seems that there's a sharpness that um, the current vehicles are more curved in the back and that there's more of a um, sweep to the to the roof line. Um, so. Is, is, is that something that is deliberate or is this just something that, that I happen to notice? No, it's, it's actually very intentional. You know, everything we do now with electric vehicles, we want it to do deliberately. So it's very purposeful. Um, 
And actually, if you look at the front end of this vehicle, uh, we, we were uh, focusing on taking away elements. You know, as you just said, John, you know, why do we need a, a grill uh, full of chrome? You know, this is kind of very ice or very um, uh, old, I would say, in, in terms of the execution. The new lighting, for example, the way we execute it, it becomes a signature element. You can embrace it. You can go across. You can do 3D patterns. Uh, you can see the way we execute it in a very unique Lincoln way. Um, and you can see the front. That's why we call it the Lincoln Star. We, we reimagine and re-envision this Lincoln Star that you see on the front of the vehicle. It's, it's like a precious, um, precious detail behind the lens. And we made the star flush and it's lit and it's a, it's a very different execution from everything we've done in the past hundred years. So it's a, it's a, it's a whole new opportunity. Still, still has the, the, I would say, the prestigiousness of a Lincoln that every Lincoln has since hundred years. But the execution is a very modern and deliberate and purposeful. And some of these uh, sloping roof line, uh, as you said, Gary, is, is driven by aero. And believe it or not, in an electric vehicle, it's all about aero efficiency. And, and that was a key, key moment for us. Kamau, it's really interesting when you look at the vehicle before it's all lit up, it has a fairly basic shape to it. But then as the lighting starts to go, you start seeing all kinds of accents coming in. And I mentioned this because many years ago, I met Sid Mead, very famous designer, as you know. And he told me, and this goes back like 40 years ago, honest to God, that in the future, Arrow was going to become ever more important and that graphics, especially lit graphics, was going to set the stage for future styling. Looks like you guys are doing it with the star concept. I mean, even today on our vehicles, you have a clear signature that down the road, you always know is a Lincoln. You know, when you follow a, on the highway, a car, you always know there's a Lincoln. You know, we were the first one introduced in Coast to Coast, Thailand. Um, you know, you can see now the new iteration, how we're thinking beyond that. But it was really important to create this, this, this visual key elements that, you, you know, it's like a facial expression. It's unique to you, unique to the brand, to come up with the identity. And, and the new lighting, I would say, is the chrome in the past. So <laughs> it's, a, it's, the, it's the way we see it. So the lighting is the new chrome and, and, and the you know, identifiers for the future. Plus, I think it's not just looks cool, but it also showcases the intelligence. So the lighting is not just purposeful you know, for the safety, but it also has this sense of ceremony that you will find in our vehicles. So when you walk up to your vehicles, you let's say you come from an event, you'll see a vehicle celebrating and knowing you will know there's your car outstanding out of all the crowds, which I think is, is, is something we want to do. Well, Kamal, I've got to ask, um, is, is this something that is doable or is this concept car world? Well, the concept cars for us is, you know, you, how would you know your true strengths if, you know, if you don't test your limits? So, <laughs> so it's always like we love to test these limits, you know, and to kind of get the reaction from customers, but also see the new, newest technologies. We embraced it fully. Um, the 3D printing on the headlamps that we use, they never been done. And you see something even on the pillars, the see-through pillars, the way you see only on the architecture. You know, if you look at the pillars, the way it was executed, uh, we really wanted to kind of focus on, can it be behind the glass? So it's a structural element, but it also 3D printed part, which I think is coming. You see it in the architecture, you see it in the, in the tech industry. And I think the auto industry can embrace it, definitely. So we're looking right now at the, the doors having open, suicide rear doors, normal or traditional front doors, no B pillar. Do you think you could ever do that? That's a great idea. We love it. I mean, the coach, the coach doors is something which is deeply rooted in our heritage, right? If you look at the coach doors and it has something very human about it. You know, if you, if you think about the, the friend that comes to your door, John, is first of all, you greet somebody with a big smile. The second thing is do you give them a warm hug. And I feel like the car opens the doors. It's just, it gives you this human hug. And we love that. Well, you know, the only car I can think of, of, of recent memory that eliminated the B pillar was the Honda Element. And uh, uh, we recently, or not recently, years later, we had a, a Acura or Honda engineer in the studio, and he was saying he'd love to go back to it. He says it's absolutely doable. You do have to add more structure. But I'm wondering, with all the structure that a battery pack is adding in the floor and all that from a side crash standpoint, can you get away with getting rid of the B-pillar? 
Yeah, like I said, is 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 something we definitely you know exploring all sorts of ideas. You know, it's like we are open minded, and I think the, the, this architecture, particularly on the electric vehicles, is going to open a whole new world of opportunities. Um, you know, stay so stay tuned. Okay. <laughs> so, so one of the other attributes that Lincoln has been uh, cultivating over the last few years is the sense of sanctuary. And I, I noticed on the star concept that the belt line seems to be somewhat higher than ordinary. Is is that play into that at all? Yeah, I think yes. Yes, absolutely. That's a great question, Gary. Is um, One of the things we want to emphasize is the horizontality with Lincoln. You know, everything we started with our quiet flight is Think about this open horizon and this 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 uh, horizon line going around it. So this high belt line also does two per two things. It's, first of all, it gives you the, the sense of sanctuary, but in that way that it also feel it feels more protected. So when you're inside of your vehicle, you have this sense of of being feeling protected, and at the same time this open spaciousness. So if you look at the belt line, uh, there's almost minimal rise. It actually doesn't rise. It's very neutral. Um, and you can see the inside feeling is this unobstructed. You know, you, you're going to feel like you're a captain on, on a yacht. Hey, I love what the, that scene that we just saw there of the, the screens coming out of the backs of the front seats. Can you really package them that way? Uh, yeah, this again is a concept. We're playing around, you know, what would be the best use case scenario? And this is something that the cu customers is telling us, you know, they want to actually use this space. Uh, not just to, to, you know, they can use this as their office space. And we want the vehicle to feel as the best room in your house. Like, you don't want to leave this car. It's almost, it can become your spa when you want to be rejuvenated. You can see some of the rejuvenation modes here. Um, but at the same time, you can be productive. You can be uh, uh, for gaming, for playing. I mean, we're really thinking about when you drive this vehicle, um, it's almost rewarding. So, so we want you to kind of be rewarded driving inside of your vehicle. So you can see this basically the way we shaped this in this movie, uh, in this animation, uh, the way we laid out this interior space. So, and the interior is, uh, is, is going to be, is going to be so much better, I think, in the future, because it's like you, you knock down, it's like, if I think about the architecture and the way we thought about it, inside of the house, you knock the walls down, all of a sudden you have this enormous space. Now you can think about it, you know, where is your playroom? Uh, where's your kitchen gonna be? Where's your entertaining? So, so the way we, that's the same way we're thinking about the interiors. So, are you guys playing around with any kind of future technology and screens that they can sort of pull down like a window shade? Well, we're definitely certainly looking into into different and observing the technology. And, uh, and again, the concept cars is always uh, a far moonshot for us to inspire us engineering and and also kind of kind of provoke a little bit to the thinking behind for our customers. Mm -hmm. Kamal, I'm, I'm wondering, um, you, you were mentioning the use of, of 3D printing and the, there's that very clever lattice work. Um, is, is that simply trim or does this add, you know, surface structural purpose in the vehicle? Well, yeah, it's both. It's actually, it's actually um, the, the 3D printed part is both. First of all, it was about thinking about lights, uh, weight saving, which is very important for electric vehicles. Uh, second thing is the rigidity, 3D printed part, and, and uh, it can be much, uh, much better and, and stronger than the stamp part in the future. And then the third aspect we felt like is there's something that creates this light and openness that you actually have the safety. So when you sit inside of the vehicle, you can you will be able to see right through these so you don't have actually any blind spot that we're all facing with because the pillars are getting much thicker uh, the cars are getting heavier so it's and again another thought you know how can we how can we think uh, a little bit more after the box out of the box mm -hmm. yeah because it seems that, that nowadays a pillars are becoming massive and i mean it's just just very difficult um oftentimes to have any sense of you know what's there but you know, with the approach that you guys have taken with the star concept, is um, you know, if it works, it's genius. Yeah, go into more detail. I'm not familiar with that, Kamal, and I, I can't remember. It was uh, the Insurance Institute or somebody just came out very recently, like in the last couple of months, complaining about you know how uh, a pillars at each side of the windshield are turning into major blind spots. They're actually a hazard. Yeah, no, we we're cognizant of that. I mean, the, this, this is why you see some of the in our aviator, for example, is is very efficient. The way we we style it, we are very cognizant about 
uh, having this unobstructed view and enjoying it. Uh, so so go into that. What What is this unobstructed view with the A-pillars on the star concept? Well, on the star concept, again, is a concept. We're just kind of testing the water. What can be done? You know, it's like a moonshot as, a, as, a, as an idea. Um, you know, how are we imagining the future? For Lincoln, he could so so, and the imagination is what you can see through them, or they're a screen yes, that just right. yeah. really, yes, go, right. go with a bit more detail because again, I'm unfamiliar. Well, with if, that. You, if you know, if you're familiar with some of the buildings, and particularly that one, you know, it was uh, you know, the um, the Zada Hadid buildings, very famous buildings, which do uh, 3D printed parts and and it's metal and concrete, and then they have the glass behind it, and it was really inspirational. If you look at the mood boards that we have in the design studio. And even the the Beijing uh, uh, Bird Nest Stadium, the way it's created, it's it's a very stable uh, construction, 3D printed part that we weren't able as designers to do in the past. So we're really embracing this new process and new technologies, how you can create things in a different way. You know, Kamal, I'm I'm wondering. Um, okay, so the star concept is is a moonshot, um, but when you you and your designers are sitting down and thinking about designing electric vehicles. Um, in, in many ways, an electric vehicle is, is more than just a change in propulsion system, okay? It's, it's a new way that someone thinks about interacting with their vehicle. I mean, suddenly things like range and charging and things like that are, are you know, top of mind versus, you know, a gasoline powered car. You know, you, you, many people don't think about it until it shows E, right? Um, so to what extent can you bring in new technologies, new designs without making people feel, you know, I'm, I'm getting into a spaceship versus I used to be getting into my navigator? Yeah, um, no, that's a great question, uh, Gary. Uh, I, think, I think first of all is this human interaction making sure that the technology doesn't overtake a human. I think that's another thing that we do very cognizant, that we put a human up first. So the technology uh, empowers you. It doesn't overtake. Uh, so that's that's the beauty of, you know, being guided by quiet flight, you know, which is the human beauty gliding in sanctuary. Uh, but one of the things you see on this star concept, you can see how we really thought about using the space differently. And if you think about not having a motor, John, before, and the way we embrace the, the front uh, trunk and creating this, this completely different experience, you know, from a use case scenario, going back and, and thinking about how would you use this vehicle? First of all, you know, opening the trunk the way it opens up, it slides up, um, and, then, and then you have a drawer that actually can deploy, you can actually put your valuables in a hidden storage. You know, how many times you go to your grocery stores and, and you don't even know where you are? <laughs> you don't even know where, you, where your groceries ended up in the back. Or, you know, you, you have this like, a beautiful storage that they used to house a motor. Now you can have some of your valuables. Uh, we also thought about what if you have a hood which can be um, um, mono, you can, can switch, switch off and on. It could be see-through. It could be a, a transparent and, and, and non-transparent. So while you're driving, you get even use of this more light, as you said, you know, in... Um, uh, have this unobstructed view. That was kind of the idea and really take full advantage of it. So that's one example. And then the second example you see on the rear of the vehicle, in the animation just played, um, the way we thought about this the lounge seat in the back, really thinking about different use case scenarios that the old vehicle is, 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 um, is again, is, 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 is almost like the supercomputer, uh, but at the same time, very human uh, and and empowers you to do great things. And if you want to go to to your events, you want to enjoy uh, with your family and friends, you can use this lounge seat in the back. And you know, those are the things that I think were were not possible before. And I think we're taking full advantage of that. You know, I I, I love how the rear opens and sort of flips around to become that lounge seat. I mean, we've had tailgates forever, right? Nobody's really figured out to do something with it. How'd you guys come up with that idea? Yeah, it's again, it's like thinking about this use case scenario. So when we create designs, we usually start thinking and and, and from, you know, what, what does a customer have not experienced? So what would we like to amplify more? And, and particularly, as you said, being this the, able to, to use your car in a different way, not just drive to A to B, but also be a companion. Uh, that was the idea. So, and really kind of enhancing this this lifestyle, and and, and it's kind of almost like ready for any mission. 
you know, forever your your purpose and whatever your mission is, that it almost enhances your your experience. That was the idea. You know, the other thing that I thought was pretty cool, because I'd never thought of it before, you know, other electric cars have frunks, but when you open it, it it's, it's a front trunk, right? In this concept, you got passed through all the way into uh, the passenger cabin. What was your thinking about doing it that way? Well, that was the idea. Um, like, like really thinking about this kind of unobstructed. If you think about uh, being on a, on a yacht and you're standing on the deck, you want to see through. And we, if we felt like, well, what, what it would it be to bring this experience, uh, not being on a boat or a yacht, being in the car, now that you, you have this open space, let's create it that way. Yeah, and and the only purpose, uh, you know, before it was just to having a motor and a washer fluid. Now you actually can use it, so it's it's absolutely stunning. I think, like I said, it's an amazing time for us, and you know, we are encouraged. We are really encouraged to to kind of you know swing for the fences, and, and we are really doing that. Um, talk a little bit about the interior. Um, more and more. OEMs are becoming cognizant of environmental issues and are using alternative materials. Are you guys doing any of that with the STAR concept? Yeah, that's a good one. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think you can even see some of the smart materials if you if you look at this uh, particular animation. The way we're using the smart materials that it actually lights up and, and showcases some of these moods that we configured, but also the usage of smart materials. So these materials are flexible, uh, they are environmentally friendly. Uh, this was another thing that it's very, very important. Um, and and you can see the way the way they convey themselves. It, it's very different from traditional uh, uh, materials that you that you see in today's industry. You know, it, it, it's interesting to me that you know um, people often think that wood and leather connote luxury. And it seems from the star concept, you guys are saying, wait a minute, you know, this is after all the 21st century, we are talking about, you know, advancements and, and not look back to stagecoaches when those materials came into their own. I, I think that that's, that's highly laudable. No, that's great. Um, one of the things uh, we, we actually wanted to emphasize in this particular uh, interior is uh, if you see the, the rejuvenation moods, uh, moods, um, that you, you can see basically it's the perfect symphony. Uh, in, the, in the first time, you, we already have some of this in, in uh, our navigator and aviator, but now with this electrification uh, and the star concept, we wanted to enhance those. So it's, uh, you can imagine this now, all of a sudden you have the sense of uh, smell, uh, scent, uh, lighting, the sounds, everything be orchestrated in this, in this beautiful symphony. So. You can imagine, like I said, you can be in your spa, you can be in your, you can reinvigorate you. And we all need sometimes, you know, our quiet time. We need sometimes even to be in our vehicles. And, and sometimes, you know, you want to be by yourself for five, 10 minutes before you go into your office or you want to do some work. We actually would empower you to do this in, a, in our a star concept. You can even see the way we, we thought about the, the deployable table that is a purposeful space that you can actually put your iPad or, or computer. Um, and we see that quite often, particularly now us coming out of the pandemic. Um, imagine the last two years, the safest space in, 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 in was your vehicle, probably. You know, you will probably feel very safe. You will spend a lot of time inside of your vehicle. Um, and, and now we're giving you some opportunity to actually enjoy it and, and, and feel really, really good about yourself. That deployable table is pretty cool. You also have that deployable steering wheel. You know, I, I get, like you said, you're swinging for the fences, you're looking down to the future, that would be perfect for a level four autonomous vehicle. But what about just creating more egress, ingress room? Are you guys looking at the the deployable steering wheel for autonomy or for other purposes? Well, the, the, the deployable tail actually stowaway, uh, uh, stowaway steering wheel is actually uh, when you're in stationary moment and, and the star concept, that when you when you parked, that actually goes away out of your way, so you can actually pull out your table. Uh, you, you touch the button and it deploys, and you can actually put your put your uh, coffee, or you can put your um, you know iPad or computer, and you can do some work if you if you like that. Hmm. That's the idea. That's great. So so it's sort of like the shift lever in the F one fifty that goes flat, so you can have the, the the table between the the front passenger and the driver. 
Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Like, you know, mm -hmm. enables you to be productive, enables you to be relaxed. I mean, whatever your, your mission is. You know, the other thing I like is the, the two front seats are mounted on pedestals. You know, they're not just completely to the floor. It, it creates much more open room. Nobody's done that in a million years. It's shown up on other concept cars before. Is this something that could make it to production? Well, look, we love the idea of these pedestal seats because I think it would enable you to create this uh, lightness. And you, you can imagine, you know, um, it's all about, again, taking the advantage of this interior space. When you sit inside a star concept, it feels a segment bigger than, than the actual exterior would convey. So I think that's the beauty of creating something, these ultra light seats, which are more efficient and not as bulky and, and, and really thinking about how to, to be much more efficient. And, uh, and that was the goal. Mm -hmm. You couldn't lose anything either because you could just see rather than uh, <laughs> as it is now. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You're not going to lose anything underneath the seats that happen to stay. Hey, look, we should take a, a quick commercial break right now. We'll be back. There's plenty of other things that I want to ask you about, and I'm sure Gary does too. But first, a shout out to our sponsors. How do Bridgestone tires stop shorter on what roads? It's their hydro track technology. But you don't have to know how the science works, just where the brake is. What really matters is their Bridgestone. The world is changing at an ever-increasing pace. No matter what the mode of transportation, there is always the need for an efficient propulsion system. And that's exactly what Borg Warner has been doing since the earliest days of the automotive industry. The future of Michigan is extraordinarily bright. Um, we have such incredible assets, and I think more and more we're realizing how to put those together in a way that's going to help this state really help lead the nation uh, as we go forward. All right, we're back talking with Kamal Kurik, the head of design at Lincoln. I want to go back to all that lighting that we were talking about, the accented lighting and all that. Before you turn it on, you don't see any lights. Yeah, I mean, it's all coming through the paint and the fascias, the hood, the, the fenders. Gary and I were at a, an event that Magna had yesterday where they were showing off this technology. Are you working with them? Are you working with others? How do you make this possible that the lighting is invisible until you turn it on? Yeah, the, the idea behind this uh, invisible is, first of all, we wanted to create actually something which is always on. Um, so it's just like with your iPhone or, or, you know, your smartphone is like, you know, you just tap on the screen, it's alive. So I think you don't have to start the engine. So the idea of this lighting is, uh, is also to kind of look out for the, for the actual user. So you can imagine it anticipates you. It will be probably off for somebody else, but as soon as you walk up, it will sense you and it will come. If you look at the embrace, it actually breathes. Uh, the star actually start to to pulsate, and, and the car is there to 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 welcome you. So so that was the idea. The way we kind of uh, scripted the journey map. Um, uh, so we do love the technology, this hidden tech, and I think it's the hardest part of design is really always creating the simplicity and and removing the, you know, the unnecessary features and and overcomplicate certain things. But then at the same time, we wanted to deliver this, the, the perfect experience. And, and I think that's just kind of what you see on the front end. I love it. I, 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 it's dramatic. And, and like I said, you don't see it until these things are, are turned on and then they just blend back into the background. How soon could we see something like this in production? <laughs> well, it's a concept, you know, it's allow us to create this again, uh, is this kind of uh, public excitement um, and, and you know, kind of test the waters, how far we can go and, um, you know, see how far we can push it with ourselves. And so it's, it's really good. I mean, we, we test and we embrace the new technologies too. So we do, we do invest in our own technologies that we think about things that, that nobody has actually thought about it, um, which is the beauty. And we work with them closely with all the suppliers, but we, we actually often start our own ideas ourselves because like, as I said earlier, Sometimes you have to create experience that, that people did not know they're going to need it tomorrow. And that's the beauty. Well, I, when you say that you want to see how far you can push it, here, here's a customer clinic of one. I want it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Kamal, you know, you, you mentioned the term embrace. That's another element that is that is part and parcel of what contemporary Lincoln is. And it 
it, when we talk about the lighting, um, Lincoln has early on um, provided the means by which, you know, someone would at night would come up to their car and the puddle lamp would come on and, and the lights would come up. Um, you know, but it seems to me that you would run the risk of going from elegant to Las Vegas, right? That it would be like, oh, I mean, how do you come to the conclusion that the way you do it is right versus, you know, seeming gaudy or otherwise superfluous? Yeah, and that's a great question. I think it's, uh, again, it's going back to the simplicity and the things that are necessary, and particularly on the exterior lighting. Um, we wanted to assure that down the road, it's the, it's a very clear identity. So mile was away, you will always know there's a Lincoln. And, and, and that was the very, very, very important part, the number one goal for us. Um, and, and today, maybe it might be the grill. It might be uh, the shape of a grill. Uh, or the amount of chrome, but tomorrow I think is going to be this this uh, this this dramatic lighting, which is not just it just gives you a different identity, and and the shape we, the way we created in this three D pattern, it, it was just not possible in the past. Uh, so so we fully embraced it. So it was a it was a strike a balance between uh, technology, a human, and, and something very unique. And I think uh, the star concept does it very well. Come on, was it difficult to walk away from the grill? I mean, we're seeing electric cars coming from other luxury automakers. They can't give up their grill. They have so much brand equity invested in just the shape of the grill. Now they're doing some sort of electronic or lighting thing. Was it difficult for you guys at all to say, you know what? We're not going to do that. We're going to do something totally different. Or did you have a bunch of arguments about it? Well, we, we definitely didn't want to jump on the big grill um, bandwagon. So <laughs> we, we, we felt pretty good about the, the, the Lincoln uh, uh, logo, the star. And, it, and, and we wanted to leverage that. This is an iconic, iconic uh, element that you will recognize around the world and is beloved by so many. And we wanted to give a fresh take on that. So is everything starts with the Lincoln star. You can see the way we modernize it. Um, and we feel like it's actually taking away elements it's much harder than adding. Uh, and that's what makes actually really good design, to focus on the really few good elements instead of uh, have a festival of chrome and grills and such. So that was the beauty. So as, as you take this concept and you roll it out to other models, uh, th the star will be, I'm, what I'm getting from you, the star is going to be prominent in the grill. But what about the lighting signatures afterwards? Will there be a Lincoln similarity? Will you use it to distinguish different models? What are your thinking or what's your thinking along those lines? Yeah, I mean, stay tuned for the for the future. We're going to we're going to be working towards the electrified future. So you're going to see a distinctive difference, but still being old on brand. You know, this is our first step into the EV world with this concept, but um, you will see some of the elements um, I'm, I'm very positive in the future. Mm -hmm. Kamal, as, as you look to the future, um, do you see vehicles still being personal versus shared or, or otherwise public? Well, I think in luxury space or in Lincoln, I think it's uh, it could be both. I think I can see opportunity for both, uh, as you said. Um, I can see that being a, a great opportunity for us in, in this industry. Um, in terms of the look, yes, it will be very personalized. And that's another thing we, we're thinking about the lighting. Uh, it could be personalized to you. You can probably have a different sequence that the way the vehicle greets you. That's why we're using this behind the, the, the actual paint uh, lighting technology that it actually be tailored to you. Uh, and we have some new technologies which are in works that, uh, you know, you're thinking about uh, almost like a, like an, uh, you can upgrade your software. So the same will happen with the car. You know, back in the days we used to have a car and you will live with that for five or ten years. Now you can think about it, um, you have a car that is going to get better and better over time. And we love that. You know, it's going to be amazing. So it's going to be such a technological advancement that you can get an update every three months and you're going to be surprised, you know, where's that coming from? You know, it's going to be a new, new uh, lighting embrace, new signature It's going to be different interior. It's going to be, it's going to be quite, quite spectacular in the future. 
Do you see any opportunities? I mean, um, you know, many people are talking about, you know, the, the over the air updates, which, you know, provides new capabilities for vehicles. Um, but I mean, is, is there a possibility that, that physical elements could actually be changed out of a vehicle? I mean, if you think about a, a, a an airplane right now, you know, a, a, a Delta plane that, that basically, you know, the, the frame stays the same. They take out the seats and they put in new seats and suddenly it looks like a new airplane, right? And the overheads change and so on. I mean, do you ever think about that, you know, the physical change versus just the software improvements? Well, I think it will be definitely something um, interesting in the future that, uh, that, that there's a desire to be a bit more bespoke to, to actually, um, be able to kind of uh, change certain things out and, and and give that the customer the opportunity to feel always up to date. I think it's going to be really interesting. That's why I like this idea of, the, uh, of being more digital than less physical. That actually the digital content, you know, if you think about it, again, going back to your phone or, you know, how or every iOS, uh, your whole skin changes. All of a sudden, you feel like you have a brand new, brand new device and has so many different features. The camera gets better, you know, the interface gets better. So I can see the same thing the, 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 the interior of the vehicles is going to get so much better over time. You've got uh, different design studios. Uh, what role do they all play in this? I mean, you know, Lincoln's doing pretty good in China right now. I'm guessing you got a lot of input from your Chinese studio. Yeah, we have a global design team. So so we, have, do, we do have a studio in Shanghai. Um, um, you know, and we have a studio in Irvine, California, and then in Dearborn. So it, it's really good. I mean, we, we work 24 hours. It's amazing, you know, how much uh, collaboration is, particularly now the way we learn to work during pandemic. We embrace all the tech tools like working in collaboration with VR. Uh, it, it was just so, so much more faster for us and enabled us to do things that we weren't able to do uh, before. Uh, so, um, we love the input. We love the the different vibes that you're getting. If you think about, you know, the China being, and and, and California probably to be the two biggest uh, tech drivers in the world, to get this real time, I think is very very important to be competitive. You know, th there's no longer what I would call a national car. You know, back in the day, you could look at a car and go, oh, that's a French car, that's an Italian car, that's German, that's American. Now you can't tell that, and yet there are differences in the market. There's different tastes. How do you try to come up with a design that you'll go, okay, the Americans and the Chinese are going to like this? Yeah, you'll be surprised, actually. There's a lot of commonality. I mean, everybody loves good design, first of all. But I think there's a lot of lot of goodness coming out of China, particularly on the tech and the speed. Uh, and then, you know, on the other side, not forgetting who we are, you know, being Lincoln for the last 100 years and keeping this heritage and prestigiousness and still being able to become much more youthful and being a bit more uh, um, daring, I think it's 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 a, it's a, it's a great inspiration for us. Well, speaking of the China market, Lincoln offers the Zephyr in China, which it doesn't offer in the U.S. market, and it's a very stylish sedan. Do you see any possibility of the sedan body style becoming an important element of the American market? Yeah, no, the, the Zephyr, yes, that's correct. That is a China unique vehicle, um, fastest program actually we have done. And it was right during the pandemic and, and really focusing on deep knowledge of China customer. And it's really tailored for the China customer. Um, but we, we we know our strengths in US SUVs and, and, and uh, CUVs and, and um, we're listening to the voice of the customer in the market. So if the trend and the customers tell us to do so, then we'll definitely listen to that. <laughs> well, that, that Zephyr got huge accolades even here in the U.S. You know, in the, in the comment section uh, of Autoline Daily when we ran it, so many people said, why don't they sell it here? The problem, of course, is unless people see it, they don't know that they can buy it. And, uh, you know, they're not going to buy it if they don't see it. So uh, I, I know what you're saying if customers ask for it, but... I wonder if there's some sort of middle ground where you can tease enough people to go to their dealership and say, I want that Zephyr. <laughs> no, that's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. Of course, of course, John, you know, everyone says they want to want to have one until 
they have to sign and then yeah. they're like, uh, oh, I want, I want to buy that crossover. So that's yeah, uh, no, look, look, it, it, the same is true of sports cars, convertibles and station wagons. Right. There's a hardcore of us enthusiasts who dearly want them, but you put them in the market and they just don't sell. Yeah. And manual transmissions and diesel engines and uh, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. So Kamal, you know, you're in charge of Lincoln now. Uh, Lincoln has so much potential. It has not hit it. Uh, what's it going to take to get Lincoln back to where when people talk about Mercedes and BMW and Audi, Lincoln is part of the conversation, not a side conversation. What's it going to take? You know, obviously there's a lot of things involved, but from a design standpoint, what's it going to take to get Lincoln right back up there again? From a design standpoint? Yeah, I think from a design standpoint, I think these are the right steps that you see now. Um, I think we have a really strong lineup, first of all, now with the customers. If you think about the, the current lineup of, of really strong cars in the market, but at the same time, you know, with the star concept, really signalizing what we want to do in the future, and there's going to be a lot more to talk about uh, pretty soon. Um, I think that people are going to get excited again. We we are we are swinging for the fences, as I said, and 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 Jim Jim Farley keeps reminding me that every day uh, <laughs> that we got to do that. So we we are absolutely we, and we love that. You know, how many times do you get to the, be told by as a designer, you can you can actually go uh, as far as you as you like. You know, yeah. this is the beauty. I think it's a very different time, and I think you'll be surprised. Uh, it won't be it won't be the same Lincoln that you know in the, the last past forty years, which is uh, is going to be very very interesting. And uh, I love the time quite personally. It's it's just so much uh, so many opportunities. Yeah, you can uh, you can imagine you know in the studio what's going on right here. It's it's, it's just a, such an interesting times. Yeah, Kamal is is you know you you mentioned in passing that someone gets in the vehicle and there's a scent that is characteristic of their vehicle. Um, you know, one of the things that Lincoln did, which I am a big fan of, is you use the Detroit Symphony to do the chimes when people get into a vehicle. So is is there deliberate thought given to audio design within the cabin of the star concept? I mean, is, is this something that is is part and parcel of what you guys are involved with, or is is that not thought of? Yeah, no, the embrace with the symphony and the sanctuary, I think, uh, again, you're going to be amplified. You know, we can do things uh, to the next level. So so the, the the sounds, the scent, you know, it can play up all your five senses. Um, so we will embrace, we will embrace the, the, um, the new sanctuary, I would say, that the, in terms of the EV um, architecture, that, that you will be quite delightful, delight, uh, delighted and, and surprised. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. You know, uh, the, the first quiet flight was again, it was a first step into, into reimagining the brand, but now with the new technologies and, and, uh, I think you're going to see a lot more from us. That's great. Yeah. Electric motors are inherently more quiet than internal combustion engines. So you got that working for you. That's right. Yep. Kamal, this is probably a good place to wrap it up. Want to thank you so much for for coming on the show, talking all about Lincoln Design and the Star Concept in particular. It's been great. No, thank you so much for having me. That was, that was a pleasure. I appreciate the time. Real good. Thanks, Gary. I'll see you okay. in a week. Okay. Take care. And everyone else too. Thank you. See you. Auto Line After Hours is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, solutions for your journey, and by Borg Warner. Propulsion solutions that support a clean, energy efficient world. Visit our website, Autoline.tv, where you can watch us live Thursday afternoons. Get your daily fix with Autoline Daily and in depth analysis and interviews with Autoline This Week. There's all that and much more at Autoline.tv.